So let's begin reading very familiar uh, passage of Scripture. The great Apostle Paul has come down to the end. He's about ready to cross over. He's about ready to receive that that he earlier said he was betwixt the two, whether go on to heaven or stay, which was more beneficial for the church, that he stayed and was the apostle. And you see, he got the privilege of being caught up in the third heaven, and he saw things that he couldn't even speak about for 14 years. And so Paul kind of had a little glimpse of what God had in store for him. And he's coming down to the end of it, and he's writing Timothy, a young pastor, and he's giving him some final instructions before the apostle Paul would be led out and be beheaded for the cause of Christ. And notice what he says at verse number 1. He says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all longsuffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. So let's pray. Our Father, we bless you. Thank you for our young people. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that they have a desire to do something for you. Yes. Lord, I'm in churches where the young people all sit in the back and they don't have any, any desire whatsoever to be any part of the service. And God, thank you for our young people. Yes. Thank you, Lord, that uh, they just demonstrate week in and week out how much they love you and how much they desire to live for Christ. Now, Father, I pray you'd help us tonight. Seems to be a sober attitude here in the service. Lord, I don't know what anybody's facing or going through, but God, you know all things. And so, God, I pray that, Lord, you'd speak to our hearts. I pray that you'd help our church. It was also fitting they sang about the church. Lord, I'm going to be preaching to the church, on the church, and for the church. And so, Father, help us tonight. Lord, be with those that are sick, be with those that are traveling, those that are providentially hindered. Help Sister Crystal tomorrow and what she's facing. Help Brother Ed. God, help others that, Lord, have needs that we know not. Lord, be with those that, Lord, uh, are facing obstacles. And, Lord, they are allowing the obstacle to get bigger than it has to be. Father, I certainly do pray that, Lord, you would continue to keep your hand on our church. And that, God, you'd give us souls for our labor. And God, we'd see many come to Christ. Thank you for the rain today. Lord, I pray for spiritual rain. I pray you'd help our folks. I do pray for uh, Brother Josh and Miss Tina be traveling. I pray, Father, for the rest that'll be traveling. I pray for little Samantha's getting ready to face surgery again, that, Lord, it would be successful this time. And God, I pray your perfect will would be done in the hearts of each and every one of us. Lord Jesus, we love you. Thank you for first loving us. Thank you, Lord, for the scriptures. Thank you, Lord, for the hope we have in Christ. Thank you, Lord, that come what may, Lord, we have eternal life waiting on us. Lord, we bless you, and we thank you, for it's in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we ask it all. Amen. Amen. The Apostle Paul, in verse number 1, tells Timothy, he says, I charge thee... Therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. That word charge means compel. He said, I am compelling you to do something in lieu of something. In lieu of what? He said, in lieu of the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ... Uh, who is going to judge the quick and the dead. The quick are those that have been made alive. And we were made alive by the Spirit of God uh, when we got born again. Uh, the dead are the dead uh, without Christ. Uh, and he's going to judge them one of these days. Uh, and he says, at his appearing and his kingdom. Uh, 
Can I say that uh, he's going to judge those that are believers at the judgment seat of Christ after he raptures the church out? Uh, and then there's going to be, uh, one of these days, a judgment of the nations. We find that in Matthew 25, uh, uh, after he comes to set up his kingdom. Uh, and then after uh, uh, his millennial reign, there will be the great white throne judgment where he's going to judge the dead, uh, the wicked dead, uh, uh, the sorry no good devil, and everyone who's defied God uh, throughout the generations, and they'll all be sentenced to their punishment in hell. Uh, and in lieu of all of that, in lieu of the fact that judgment is coming, and by the way, if you're not careful, uh, you'll get so distracted with life, you forget the fact that judgment is coming. Uh, and we must all give an account of ourselves uh, unto the Lord. Uh, why is it important, Brother Adrian's been teaching on casual Christianity? Because uh, we don't want to be casual when the Lord comes. Uh, we want to be on the firing line. Uh, we want to be giving it all for our all for Christ. Uh, we want Jesus to be honored with our lives. Uh, and in lieu uh, of the Lord coming, Paul is compelling Timothy on some things. Now notice, first of all, the task that Paul lays before Timothy. In verse number 2, he says, Preach the word. He didn't say, Substitute the word with dramas and movies. He didn't say, Substitute the word with uh, building it on uh, uh, vacation Bible schools and building it on things that entertain. He said, Most importantly, in the lieu of the fact Jesus is coming, you preach the word. My dear friend, if preaching the Word of God does not get the job done, the job will never get done. God chose through the foolishness of preaching to save them that would believe, uh, and He also chose through preaching to help His church. Look what He says. Uh, Preach the Word, uh, be instant in season, out of season, reprove. Uh, that means to prove again those things uh, that have been evident in people's lives. Uh, 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 they tell me the greatest way to learn is through repetition. And my dear friends, the more you hear it, uh, the more it sinks in, uh, the more it takes root, uh, the more that it becomes reality. Uh, he said, keep preaching them the word. Uh, keep preaching truth. Uh, I don't care how many times uh, uh, I've heard John 3, 16, it's still sweet to the soul. Uh, just reprove uh, those things uh, that have already been preached. Uh, prove them again. Uh, because people are made of flesh uh, and they're apt to forget uh, and they need to keep hearing it and hearing it and hearing it uh, until they finally get it. Uh, he said, preach the word, reprove. Uh, this is his task. Uh, he said, rebuke. Uh, that means uh, if they're out of line, straighten them out. Simply what it means. Uh, you know what to rebuke people better than anything? That Bible right there. Uh, hey, uh, I've been in services uh, where the preacher preaches a salvation message uh, and there was something not right in my life with God uh, and God convicted me uh, even though the message wasn't really to me because I'm born again. Uh, hey, uh, uh, when you preach the Bible, uh, the Bible will rebuke people. Uh, the Bible will show people where they are uh, and where they should be. Uh, uh, but you know what, people? People don't like the truth. Uh, why they don't like preaching the word of God? Uh, they don't want to have to deal with God over their sin. Uh, he said, reprove, that's your task. Rebuke, that's your task. Uh, he said to exhort, that's to encourage, that's to uh, uh, fire people up, uh, that's to give them hope. Uh, he said, encourage them with all long suffering and doctrine. Since 1974. There's been an ecumenical movement in America pushing uh, all churches to lay aside their doctrine and come to go together under the umbrella of the name of Jesus. Listen, there's none other name given under heaven like the name of Jesus. But Jesus taught his disciples doctrine. And James told, tells us, or Jude tells us that we're to earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Uh, you know what divides doctrine? Yep. Yeah. Mm? I cannot worship with somebody that doesn't believe the Bible. Amen. I cannot worship with somebody uh, that believes uh, uh, you need to be baptized to be saved. 
I cannot worship with somebody who believes that you got to speak in tongues to be saved. I cannot worship with somebody uh, who believes uh, that the Bible is just something you can choose to do when it's convenient for you. The Bible is the absolute final authority of our lives. And can I say, doctrine is simply the study of the Bible. And we got to lay that task before people. He gives him the task to preach the word and what to, how to preach and why to preach it. We see that. But notice, if you will, and he also mentions time. Look at verse number 3. For the time will come, and can I say it has come, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Uh, listen, uh, the devil's got plenty of them to tell you what you want to hear. Right, right. Joe Osteen will tell you exactly what you want to hear. Amen. You can live however you want to and still go to heaven. Yeah, hmm? right. There's only one problem. That's not what the Bible teaches. Right, right. Bible teaches, be ye holy, for I'm holy. Amen. Hmm? The Bible teaches us to sin not. Uh, can I say that uh, 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 there is a, we are living in a time when folks do not endure sound doctrine. Uh, 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 listen, if you stand for this Bible uh, and you preach this Bible, you're not going to be very popular today. Amen. Mm? Amen. Uh, listen, the Bible says uh, they were not of us, for if they would have been of us, they would have not left us. Uh, can I say that uh, 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 there are some uh, who do not believe sound doctrine. Uh, they do not like sound doctrine. Uh, they're not going to endure it. Uh, and the Bible goes on to say that they were spots in your feast. Uh, they were clouds that could not hold water. Uh, can I say uh, there are some that like the ideal of being in a church or being around church uh, for fellowship reasons, uh, but they do not like uh, sound doctrine. And sound doctrine is exactly what Brother Daniel quoted a minute ago, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Hmm? Uh, moreover, in stewards, it's required that a man be found faithful. Brother Adrian's been teaching on the talents that those men were given. Hmm? We're all stewards. We've been given something valuable. We've all been given the Bible. We've all been given the church. We've all been given the commission of the gospel. Uh, 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 listen, uh, uh, God has given us talents, and when we're judged, we're going to be judged on what we did with the talents. And there's some people who just don't want to handle it. They just don't want that responsibility. They want to live however they want to and go to heaven. I've told you all the story. I used to work back in the days when I worked a secular job. I had a guy that worked for me. I knew his brother. His brother was a sound, fundamental Christian. I mean, loved God. I mean, drove a bus and picked up kids, uh, went out knocking on doors every week, uh, 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 was faithful to his church, uh, faithful with his money, faithful with his life, faithful in his service. Well, then I meet his brother. His brother comes to work for me. I'm thinking, well, he goes to the same church. He's probably got the same mentality, got the same character. Wrong. You see, I just go up talk to him about the Lord. I noticed he squirmed a little bit when I do that. And finally he says, hey, hey, I want to get something straight. I'm not like my brother. He said, I'm saved, I know I'm saved, and I'm satisfied with that. God will just give me a cabin in the corner of glory land. He don't have to give me much. I'm just glad knowing I'm going to heaven. Uh, he said, I don't get involved in any others. I said, you might want to do some checking up. You might not be going to heaven. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away, behold, old things have come new. Can I say this as simple terms as I know? Saved people ought to act like saved people. And there, we're living in a day and age where people are tuning in because we have so many resources available to us, and they're listening to things that are not sound doctrine. And it is enticing them, and when they hear sound doctrine, they don't want it. Amen. So they'll be drawn away. You better be careful what you listen to. You better be careful who you read after. You better be careful. Huh? The devil's slick. Yeah. And he knows how to bait that hook and put it in you and draw you out. So he tells mm, Timothy, there's a time coming. They're not going to endure sound doctrine. Can I say? It's hurtful when you see somebody you love and that you've invested in leave the church. It's hurtful. 
But could I say, most of the time they leave over the, the, the most minute and simplest things that could have been resolved if they just sat down and talked to somebody. I'll never forget the first time Paul Hill ever preached here, my friend Brother Paul Hill. I'll never forget this. He said, long before they leave the, the threshold of the doors of the church, their heart's already gone. Hmm? Better guard your heart. The devil's after it. So we see the task. We see the time. But he also mentions the turn. Look at verse number 4. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. We live in a day and age where people don't want truth. Amen. This is not only a Bible doctrine, this is the society doctrine. We live in a day and age where people don't want the truth because the truth reveals who they really are. That's how I know that man didn't write the Bible because this Bible tells us how sinful man is and how holy God is. If man wrote the Bible, they'd tell us how sinful God was and how holy man is. Amen. People don't want to change. They want their cake and eat it too. They want fire insurance. They want uh, the thought that they're going to get to go to heaven, uh, but don't expect anything out of their lives. Uh, and we've come to the place where you can tell people the truth of the gospel. Uh, you can witness to them. You can preach to them. Uh, you can share any avenue with them with the gospel. Uh, they don't want to hear it. Uh, they want to hear something that's convenient. Uh, they want to hear something that's casual. Uh, they want to hear something that's watered down. Down. Uh, they want to hear something uh, that does not deal with the reality that we're going to stand before God uh, and you better have your sins washed in His blood. They don't want to hear that. Can I say, we see it in society. I don't know, I haven't counted them, but I imagine the Democrats have broken and rewrote not so many laws in the last three weeks and people don't care. They don't care. Oh, my granddaddy voted Democrat. My, my daddy voted Democrat. I'm going to vote Democrat. Well, you're not very smart. Can I say that Google and Meta, which is Facebook, are doing everything in their power to erase any videos of the hyena making stupid statements? They don't want her to be exposed for the, the moronic things that she, has been, that she has said. And they are trying to erase it. You know why? Because people don't want don't to hear the truth. Right. We find that the media spews lies after lies after lies, and people must believe it. Right. Hmm? Amen. Now, I'm not going to tell you Donald Trump's a saved man or a holy man. But when, it's comp when you compare apples to apples right here, this woman shouldn't even be in politics, let alone uh, g trying to try for the highest office in the land. Amen. And if people vote for her, they're fulfilling that verse right there. They're turning their ears away from the truth and they're believing fables. Hmm? Amen. How is it that every time it's an election season, the politicians lie, 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 like you couldn't believe. Liar, liar, pants on fire. They tell us all their accomplishments. Do you realize we got people that can't buy groceries in America because of the current administration's economic policy, but they have given trillions of dollars to Ukraine. Now, let me just ask you a question. How many of you have seen footage of Israel being bombed in the last year? Yeah, they show that. Has anybody seen any footage on Ukraine? The only footage I've seen is people going to movies and going to nightclubs and everybody looking like no problems. So where's all that money going to? Well, Joe Biden didn't get five mansions, you know, on, on a senator's salary. And not only him, Mitch McConnell, name them all. Right. 
but they'll stand up election season after election season. We've done this, we've done that, we've done that. And Republican, Democrat alike, they both lie, lie right out of the sides of their mouths. Amen. And people believe it. I'm so sick and tired of political ads, aren't you? We had the director of the FBI. Anybody ever hear of the FBI? The director of the FBI just this week went before Congress and told them he didn't believe it was a bullet that hit Donald Trump. And then other people from the FBI said, we know it was a bullet. People from the Secret Service said, we know. Why did he say that? They're trying to minimize that because that was a very powerful moment when he stood up and said, fight, fight, fight. And he wanted to go on and give the speech. Because they want people to believe fables. Yeah. Same thing in churches. I'm so tired of hearing, well, if we let up in this area, we can attract more young people. You know what attracts young people? Something that's real. We just do away with the pulpit. If we dim the lights, if we get a rock band, if we, if we do away with, with hymn books and we sing these chanting choruses, then everything will work out real good. And people are empty, and they have no idea why they're empty because they're doing everything that their religion is telling them. Amen. It's a facade. Now, Paul, he compels him concerning the task at hand, preach the word, the time that will come, the, the turning from the truth. I'm interested in verse number two. He said, preach the word, semicolon. Then he adds something. He says, be instant in season, out of season. To be in season, to put it in terms that we would understand, in season times is when things are exciting at the house of God. When folks are being saved, the church is thriving, it's exciting, revivals are happening, folks just can't get enough, uh, and they're just longing to get back to church and see what happens next. Uh, 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 everybody's in tune. Everybody's seeking the same thing. Uh, everybody's uh, 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 just on fire and looking forward to what God's going to do. It's easy preaching in those times. It's easy coming to church. Uh, I mean, those times you can get somebody that can't carry a tune to bucket, get up and sing, and God fall on the service. Amen. But then he says, out of season. Out of season is those times when it doesn't seem like anything's happening. You're preaching the same Bible, singing the same songs out of songbook. Everybody's coming to church. Everybody's paying their tithes. You got people singing special songs, and everything's good, but it's not great. You come, and you come, and you come, and it just seems like it's routine that nothing is happening. With that thought, I want to preach tonight on the out-of-season times. Because I really think that's where our church is right now. I've noticed the last few weeks in preaching, folks seem to enjoy it, but it just doesn't seem to be impacting people. And folks are doing what they're supposed to do, but it just seems like there's something missing. The teaching's been good, the preaching's been good, the singing's been good, but it's not been great. And the Lord just burned my heart on that thought right there. The out of season times. Can I say the out of season times? In those times, the water seems to be still. Can I say no matter what river, stream, creek that you go on, water flows. Now, it may not flow 
rushing like I'm sure some of the creeks are after the rain we had today might be a trickle but it's flowing but when it's out of season times things just don't seem to flow it just seems to be stagnant water seems to be just sitting there like at a pond rather than flowing water just seems to be still now listen if you're in a rowboat you like it when there's a little current less work on you but if you're in still water it's all on you you're not going anywhere without all the energy coming from you and can I say that in out of season times things just don't seem to flow again folks are being faithful the same Bible's being preached and taught the same old songs are being sung everything seems to uh, be right but it's just not flowing that excitement's not there that fire's not there that energy that oh I can't wait to see what God's going to do next isn't there if you're not careful you'll get discouraged if you don't see the water flowing yeah. good. can I say that good is a lot better than mediocre. May not be great, but it's not mediocre. It's not bad. It's just good. And let me just say this. You may be sitting on a boat on still water and think nothing's happening. But I remind you, underneath the boat, underneath the water, there's life. Yeah. Yes. Huh? Yeah. There's life yeah. under the water. And listen, even when uh, the water doesn't seem to be flowing, uh, aren't you glad that inside of us that are born again, there's life? Uh, yeah. Hey, uh, uh, it may not be coming to the surface, uh, but there is life. Uh, and hey, as long as there's life, there's opportunity. There's something happening. Uh, it may just be good. It may not be flowing. Uh, but hallelujah, there's still life uh, in out-of-season times. Can I say that in the out-of-season times, not only does the water seem still, the volume seems silent. There are some times we've come in here and there's an emotional connection between the preaching and the folks sitting in the pew. Sure. Folks are excited. They're shouting amen. They're hallelujah. They're excited. You know, it's striking a chord in their heart. And they're not holding back. They're just letting it out. But in out-of-season times, just like right now, the volume seems to be silent. seems to lack some emotion I remind you that worship is not based on emotion Jesus told that woman at the well there's coming a time when they that worship shall worship the Lord in spirit and in truth not in emotion and that's our problem for too long we've watched the charismatics, and for too long uh, we've come to a place where we think that it's uh, based on emotion it's based on feelings uh, listen uh, no it's based on faith and the facts of the word of God uh, and hey uh, I'm an emotional guy you know that I like it when it gets high uh, I like it when they're throwing babies in a running laps uh, and folks are shouting their lungs out uh, I like it that way uh, but listen uh, I've seen a lot of places where they're shouting and hooping uh, but there's no substance uh, I'd rather have substance uh, and the facts and the truth being preached uh, and no emotion uh, than to have all emotion and it's nothing like but like cotton candy uh, throw it in your mouth it's gone mm. you cannot base the moving of the spirit of God on emotion Mm. Again, I like it when it's emotional. 
I like it when folks are hot. I like it when the, when the Holy Ghost gets on me and I get to preaching and when it's all done, I don't even know what I said. That's what I know God did the preaching. Amen. And I like it when somebody's fiery and I like it when God's a breathing. But I, some of the most powerful services I've ever been in, God put a holy hush on the place and the preacher didn't even lift his voice. One of the greatest messages that have ever been preached was by Jonathan Edwards, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. And they tell me that he read that by candlelight, holding it up right before him. He didn't even preach it. He read it. Just read it off the paper like he wrote it. And thousands and thousands have been saved. Many were saved that night, but not like they were until it was put in book form a couple years later. Can I say, don't get caught up in people's emotions. Get caught up in the Word of God. Hmm? Don't judge your spirituality based on whether somebody else is shouting or not. It's a dangerous thing to think, well, I got something wrong with me because I don't worship like they do. Well, number one, you don't know where God saved them from. No. Huh? And number two, God didn't cookie cut us. We're all individuals. And we're all made different. And isn't it a blessing that God saves different folks? Huh? I, I, I'm glad for that. I mean, if we all worship the same, that'd get pretty boring, wouldn't it? I kind of like it when Brother Phil makes a comment that I, while I'm preaching and I don't hear it, and I find out afterwards, and it's pretty funny what he said, you know. Huh? Like that night I was preaching on dying and bad ways to die, and I was talking about drowning. He said, yeah, or getting eaten by a dinosaur. <laughs> I didn't hear it while I was preaching. But I'm gonna, afterwards, I'm thinking, what? But I love you, Phil. I don't want to be eaten by a dinosaur either. Because dinosaurs are pretty close to snakes, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to have nothing to do with them, huh? But I'm just trying to say, there's only one Brother Phil, and there's only one of you. Sometimes worship it and you're hooping and hollering, it's what's running down your face. Or it's the smile on your face, or it's the burning in your heart. But I'm saying in the out of season times, the volume seems to be silent. Paul said, be instant, in season, out of season. Even when it's silent, still preach, still worship, still do your part. Can I say in the out-of-season times, dryness forms on the surface. Brother Ray rented that bobcat, thought he'd peel off the topsoil back there when building that garage. He said the ground was as hard as, as, as the blacktop. He said he had a rough time getting that up. You know why? It hadn't had any rain. When them out of season times happen, dryness forms on the surface. You know what happens when things get dry? They start to crack. They start to shift. This building's shifting right now in this corner. I got a big crack in my, above my door, my office. In times gone by, it shifted in that corner. And Brother Ray's done a wonderful job patching a lot of problems we've had. Because when it gets dry, things shift. Can I say, when people get dry, they're in danger of shifting. You better stay on the foundation that you've been built upon. Because when you shift gears in mid-course, in mid friend, you're headed for trouble. Stay the course. Even when dryness starts forming on the surface things get to cracking hmm. I don't know about anybody else I have, I have dry skin in my hands when, it, when they get dry my fingertips will crack and all that and that stuff that it comes in that green thing for hands and that, that stuff really works O'Keefe's or whatever it is that stuff really works it's kind of weird feeling but it does work it'll, it'll clear it up in a matter of no time but I'm telling you when things get dry and crack, they can split all kinds of problems. Uh, but I want to remind you, we're to be instant in season, out of season. Even when things get dry. And I also want to remind you of this. 
even when the surface is dry, that seed is still germinating beneath the ground. Yes, sir. Amen. Uh, there are things happening below the surface. Now, you've got to be careful when it's out of season. You see somebody that's dry, and you might make an assumption about them. Hmm? Well, you're only about two services away from being dry yourself. You better be real careful. But you don't know what God's doing in their heart. And you don't know where they are in their life. You don't know what they're facing. You don't know what load they're carrying. You don't know anything that's about them. You better be careful making assumptions about people. You know it would be real good if we'd all learn to do this. When we see somebody that's not acting like they normally act, pray for them. Pray God help them. Pray God touch them. Pray God send some rain to their dryness. Can I say this? In the out of season times, the storms seem more severe. When things are rolling, you go through a storm, you was expecting it. Because, I mean, you know, when God gets the blessing, you know the devil's going to show up. And you're going to face some storms, but when you're full of God, it don't matter. But when it's out of season, there hadn't been any rain for a while. The thunder sounds louder. The lightning cracks more. And the rain seems to be heavier. Mm -mm. The storms seem to be more severe. You better be careful. Out of season times, people get knocked out of the race because they got their eye on the storm instead of the Savior. I just don't know how I'm going to recover from this one the same way you recover from the last one. Depend on the Lord. Uh, storms are coming, you know that. Man's days are few and full of trouble. But in dry times, they just seem to be magnified. In dry times, it seems like only weeds grow. We got some new neighbors moved in next door to us. They're young. They don't speak English too well. Try to be friendly to them, seem friendly. I got a dog that I'd like to shoot. One of them little yapping chihuahuas, you just want to kick to the next county. You know what I'm saying? Uh, now my dog barks, that dog yaps. There's a difference. Yapping will get on your nerves. But anyways, all summer, I've seen him mow his grass twice, and he had a relative come in and mowed it a third time. All, I mean, since they've been there all year, three times. Right now, he's got weeds growing up in his yard taller than me. It's been dry. And I'm not cutting my grass like I was cutting it. I don't want to kill it. But we do keep it manicured. This guy's not cut it in a month or more. And I'm not kidding you. The weeds are thriving in his yard. Hmm? In dry times, that's, that's the only thing that really seems like it's growing is weeds. Uh, better be careful jumping on some movement in dry times. Uh, you remember down there at Asbury College, you know, a great revival broke out. Anybody hear of any churches growing around there? Amen. That was just a weed. And people flocked to it because in dry times they'll flock to something that looks like it's alive. Yeah. Amen. Hmm. Better be careful. The storms seem more severe, and you better be careful. You'll get to looking in the wrong direction. Let me say this. In the out of season times, they're prime time for Satan to show up and mess with you, your life, our lives, our church. Let me tell you how Satan works in the out of season times. First, he'll stir. He'll show some excitement somewhere else. Do you ever wonder why some of these churches have to have carnivals to get a crowd? Because they don't have any substance inside. 
But he'll, he'll have something. He'll stir something up. I remember the 40 Days of Purpose movement. I remember the Frog movement. I never did get that one. I remember what would Jesus do movement. I mean, there's always something out there the devil is promoting that is enticing, that looks real. He gets to stirring to get your eyes off the truth. Can I say, he not only stirs, he splinters. He causes wedges. He'll splinter relationships between people in their, in their home. He'll drive a wedge between husband and wife or between parents and children. And he just causes wedges in people's lives. He'll do it in the church. He'll call, call, cause wedges between people. Here's how the devil works. When it's no rain, I come in one day, I got a load. I got a lot on my mind. Usually I do when I walk in the sanctuary anyway. And I walk right by you and I don't shake your hands, but I shook people's hands around you. All of a sudden you get it in your mind. The devil says, Brother Doug's got a problem with you. And then you go home all week. And all you can think about, Brother Doug's got a problem with you. By the end of the week, you've got a problem with Brother Doug because he's got a problem with you. And the bad thing about it is I might not have seen you because somebody with a big head might have been behind you and I might have walked right by you. Somebody like Brother Peter or somebody, you know. Didn't even see you. It was not an intentional thing on my part. But oh, the devil built that thing up in your mind. Amen. And then you got a problem with Brother Doug. And instead of saying, Brother Doug, can we, can we have a conversation? I'm pulling this and that in, we'll have a conversation. You say, do you got a problem? Say, oh, no, Miss Norton, I love you. Why, why would you think such a thing? Well, you didn't shake my hand last week. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't see you. Had I seen you, I'd have shook your hand. We get that thing resolved. But most people, what they do, they just keep listening. Yep. Not to that still small voice, right. to that slick tongue voice. Good. Next thing you know, well, the wedge is formed, and what follows wedges is withdrawals. People either get gone, or they'll sit in the church house and avoid the person that they've built up in their mind they got a problem with. Now, there may be an issue where somebody's got a problem with you. Again, sit down and talk about it. Don't let it fester in your mind. Because you let your mind start running, it's going to run rampant. Mm -hmm. sure will. And it'll never run to Christ. Mm. Not those kind of things. Amen. The devil wants to splinter. He wants, he, he wants to steal, kill, and destroy. Right. And the best way to do that is divide people. Right. Hmm? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's unity. Amen. Huh? How beautiful and pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. The Lord wants to unify us because when we're one, we're a force to be reckoned with. Uh, but if he, if he splinters uh, 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 us and there's gaps uh, in the hedge, uh, then, my dear friends, the enemy can come through many different ways. Uh, and he wants that rather than unity. Any preacher worth his salt is constantly praying and seeking and trying to exhort people to unify. It's because the devil's so slick at dividing. He not only stirs and splinters, but he'll seize. The devil takes hold of things that aren't his. Now, Brother Josh had a pretty good idea the other day. He came to me and said, you know, all these people uh, all over the country, they're going in and squatting and taking over people's homes, and they can't get them out, and some of the laws finding in favor of the squatters. He said, well, let's just go up there and sit down and take over the vineyard. <laughs> we could be squatters. There you go. Pretty good idea. But they might shoot. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> There's some people don't like to give it up. But the devil wants to seize 
anything he can, especially things that aren't his. No? He just wants to take over and control it and seize and take over your life. Starts with your mind. If you're not careful, he'll have you out of church, sitting under a juniper tree, uh, pouting, uh, thinking that uh, you're a failure. There are people I know of right now that are out of church that love God, one time had a heart for God, but they allowed the devil a space in their minds. And tonight, they don't even feel worthy to come to a church. Yeah. Amen. Mm. Uh, that's what the devil does. Sure. He doesn't just come to show up. He comes to take over. Sure. Yeah. Uh, my dear friends, them out-of-season times are dangerous, dangerous times. And I thought about this. What is our responsibility in the out-of-season times? Hmm. we can see the effects of it we can preach on it all day long but what are we to do Miss Cinda when it gets a little dry when it's good but it's not great when it's not exciting and fiery and reviving what do we do Miss Marcy well our responsibility when it's out of season is first of all to entreat. That simply means to ask earnestly. Somebody needs to get a hold of God. Yeah. It'd be a good thing if we all got a hold of God. But I've seen in the Bible several times where one man interceded for a nation and God's heart was turned to those people because of the intercessor. Give us somebody who can get a hold of the horns of the altar and get a hold of God and pray. And I mean, I'm not talking to them now I lay me down to sleep prayers, uh, but one that touches the heart of God with a heart of brokenness, saying, God, uh, if you don't show up, and God, if you don't move, uh, God, uh, 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 things might go from good to mediocre, and God, we need you, and somebody needs to get a hold of the Lord. Uh, I don't care who it is, man, woman, boy, or girl, somebody get a hold of God. It's our responsibility to entreat and pray and seek the Lord. By the way, that is the most powerful force on earth is prayer. It moves heaven toward earth. Somebody needs to get a hold of God. Our responsibility is to entreat. It's also to endeavor you look again in verse 2. Paul said, be instant, in season, out of season. That word instant just simply means to strive or to strain, to have a drive, to press forward. Regardless of the circumstances or situation, still strive for God. Uh, still strain with every fiber of your body to serve the Lord. Uh, uh, get a drive that you're going to come uh, and be faithful uh, and worship God if nobody else does. Uh, it takes somebody who's going to endeavor. Hey. Amen. Listen, weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Throughout the Bible, it says, and it came to pass. It didn't come to stay, it came to pass. And can I say, we live in a part of the country where we have four seasons. Well, we used to have four seasons, now we don't have spring anymore. We go from winter to summer. But we have four seasons. It's not always summertime. It's not always springtime, not always harvest time. Fall is so beautiful. Sometimes it's wintertime. But you've got to press on through the winter because spring's coming. Amen. Huh? And can I say that we just need to endeavor huh? just to stand our post, to stand in the gap, make up the hedge, just do our part till the Lord decides to break through. And when he does, friend, you'll be so glad you stood, you stood true. Amen. We're to entreat, we're to endeavor, but we're to also endure. He said they will not endure. But look what it said there in verse 2. Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. Where to endure? That word long suffering means to endure with patience. 
I know I don't have much patience. I think some of you don't have any patience. And please don't pray for patience. But just endure with patience. Just wait on the Lord. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Just wait on the Lord. Just endure. And listen. They tell me that if you're in pain, if you can endure for six minutes, your body does something with adrenaline which causes you to be able to handle and manage your pain. Six minutes. That's not a lifetime. But when you're in a great deal of pain, six minutes seems like a lifetime. Just endeavor with patience. Hmm? Just endeavor with patience. And then the body, the church, will kick in with some adrenaline. And what you was painful over won't bother you like it did. Uh, but we need to endure. Uh, it amazes me, and Brother Adrian, I'm sure, has seen it, and Brother Ron, I'm sure, has seen it. It amazes me in churches when things go a little south, how many preachers jump ship. I'll never forget, long before I was a preacher, I'll never forget Melvin Sisson sitting at my grandparents' dining room table. We was having dinner for church and for revival. I'll never forget him saying, he said, you don't leave a church when it's down. You leave a church when it's on fire. That's when he left High Point. High Point was run over 400 on fire. And he went into evangelism. And I say, you don't jump ship when she's struggling. You dig in. And then when the Lord comes back, we'll all go out in a blaze of glory. Amen. We're to endure. I thought about this. It's our responsibility to embrace. What are we to embrace? First of all, the promises of God. That's where our hope comes from. That's how our faith is built. Right. We're to embrace the truth. Don't base everything on emotion. Don't base everything on what somebody tells you. Base it, embrace the Word of God. We're not only to embrace the promises of God, we're to embrace the people of God. Why do you think God gave us one another? So we could help bear one another's burdens, especially in the out-of-season time, out of season times. Well, you have a church family. You have a church family that has been trained and taught to be transparent. It's okay in this sanctuary to stand up and say, pray for me, I'm struggling. You'll find out you've got friends you never knew you had that'll help you, that'll be there for you, be a blessing to you. You don't have to bear it alone. Uh, you've got a church family that'll be kind and uh, affectionate to you and will be good to you, my dear friends. Uh, embrace the people of God. You say, preacher, I, I'm in good shape. I don't embrace the people of God. You may be all right today, but tomorrow's another day. The book of Job, it said, and a day came forth. But can I say, maybe you don't need a blessing, why don't you be a blessing? Uh, we're to embrace the promises of God, we're to embrace the people of God, and we're to embrace the purpose of God. Can I say that the Great Commission was given to the church regardless of the season? We're to let people know about Christ. We have a job to do. And that job is not coming to church. This is worship. This is the icing on the cake. The job is to let sinners know that they can be saved. The job is to be a light in this dark world. The job is to be salt uh, in this unsavory world. Uh, the job is to have the hope of glory in us coming out of us uh, that people will ask us of our hope. Uh, we're to embrace the purposes of God. You know what an end of dryness when we all just start doing what we're supposed to do. Happiest you'll ever be is the busiest you are for Jesus. And when you're busy for Jesus, guess what? Your dryness goes away. You get a zeal you didn't have. The Lord will help you with a wind from another world. You know why the Lord doesn't help you when you're, when you're not doing something for Him? Why should He? You're not doing anything. You don't need wind in your sails. But if you're doing something, he'll provide you wind for your sails.
Uh, we're to entreat, we're to endeavor, we're to endure, we're to embrace, and then lastly, we're to eye. We're to focus on something. We're to be looking for the Lord's rescue. Hmm? We're to eye the horizon to see where the Lord's coming from, what He's doing. Listen, He has never abandoned His children. He's promised He'll never leave us nor forsake us. And I don't know what God's up to and what God's going to do. I'm just looking for Him. Hmm? Got to be looking for the Lord's rescue. We've got to be looking for the Lord's reviving. I do not enter the sanctuary that I don't come hoping Lord sends great revival. Because I know revival is going to come through the church if it's going to show up. And God's no respecter of persons, so why wouldn't God send it to us? That's my mentality. Mm, We've got to keep our eye for a little reviving. Uh, I was looking at my grass today. It perked up just a little bit of rain we got yesterday and today. Wonder what a little rain in the church house will do for his people. Uh, and then we got to keep our eye, we got to keep looking for the rapture, friend. One of these days it'll all be over. Uh, we won't have to worry about it anymore. It'll all be over. All of our problems, all of our woes, it'll all be over the moment that trumpet sounds. Nobody likes out of season time. Hmm. nobody likes things when they happen out of season it's been so dry I don't know about your yard but I'm starting to see leaves in my yard I hate raking leaves we ain't in fall why have I got leaves it's out of season strange things happen in out of season times uncommon things happen but just because it's out of season don't give us an excuse to relieve our duties. Paul's told him, preach the word. Do your task, whether it's going good or whether it's not. Just be consistent. The greatest witness we are to people is when things aren't great and we're still consistent. When you are facing a storm, and your faith is unwavering. Hey, anybody can serve God on the mountain. But when you're going through it and you're still faithful, that resonates to people. So let me say this. As far as us and our relationship with the Lord, and as far as our relationship to one another, and as far as the ministry and commission of Emmanuel Baptist Church, in reality, there is no out-of-season times. We're always to be ready to give an answer of the hope that lieth in us. We're to always be in season, regardless of the circumstances. Because folks get out of season when they allow circumstances to rise bigger than Christ. God help us. In what appears to be out of season times, we just take it in stride as it's just another time. And one day, the Lord's going to break through. And who knows what He's going to do. I charge you like Paul charged Timothy. Stay the course. Keep serving Christ. Keep looking up. And no telling what God's going to do the next time we meet. Let's all stand, Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. That was my heart tonight. What saith you, Emmanuel Baptist Church? They're picking out a song. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we sure do bless you. Lord, we're glad with you. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Lord, what we may appear is see is stillness and dryness and those things. Lord, you're still working. So God, help us, Lord, not to get caught up in circumstances, but help us to be...
consumed with Christ. Lord, help us to be faithful. Help us to be true. And help us to point others to you. God, speak to hearts now. Somebody might be a little dry. I pray that, Lord, you'd water them. Lord, somebody might be a little still. I pray, Lord, you'd give them a little zeal. Somebody, Lord, may be hurting. I pray you'd give them a little balm. Lord, whatever the need is, help your dear children. Help our church. God, give us souls for our labor and help us to see you do a great work of uniting, unison, reviving, a great work in the hearts of your people. We'll bless you. We'll praise you. Thank you, Lord, for your truth. Thank you for being that friend that stick it closer than a brother. Thank you, Lord, for providing peace in troubled waters. Now, God bless. Have your way. We'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.